What are we being given by the Obama people uh, as a public policy program? Well, we're going to have higher taxes on high earners um, at, at time of recession, apparently, which is not even uh, standard Keynesian economics, which means um, that you know, if you do make a lot of money, you will be able to spend less of your own money and to direct less of your own money. And I think there's one proposal there that deserves uh, a, a real spotlight. And I think particularly when one is talking about Jewish voters, and one, uh, the charitable deduction is being reduced for high earners. You are channeling money away from the voluntary organizations that have made America strong and has been recognized since Alexis de Tocqueville in the 1830s and channeling it into a centralized command and control central government. Um, that is not creating the kind of America uh, we want to see. So this is a proposal that I think takes away choice and puts you into centralized command and control. This younger generation is not a generation uh, that wants to be told what to do. They want to make their own choices. Uh, they, uh, you know, when I was growing up, you listened to the top 40 on the radio, whatever it was. You didn't have any choice. Uh, now you have your own iPod and your playlist. You've got your MySpace and so forth. And yet this administration wants to channel money away from philanthropic organizations and channel it to government. They want to slam you into a labor union once the goons can get signatures on 50% plus one of the cards and then have a federal arbitrator come in and tell you what your wages and working conditions are forever and ever. We have seen what happens when you have uh, competition between 20, mid 20th century centralized command and control, like the UAW auto workers, 5,000 pages of work rules on the one hand, adversarial bargaining with month long disputes on the floor and so forth, versus the 21st century model like the Japanese auto assemblers who pay the same wages but have cooperative worker management and so forth. Uh, and which one has produced better quality? Which one has produced uh, better products? Which one has produced more profit? Well, uh, we can see which ones have come into Washington seeking money to avoid bankruptcy. I think the answer to that is clear uh, in that the, uh, the card check bill presents a real menace uh, and a real uh, threat of taking us back to uh, a way of industrial organization, which we have found doesn't work very well. I'm from Michigan, uh, and I know about that. They're trying to create a centralized health care plan that once again will reduce choice with an attempt to uh, uh, eliminate choices in some cases by um, so-called uh, comparative effectiveness ratings which result in something that comes out in Tom Daschle's book as denial of care. Uh, so we're moving us in a health care system towards the, well, towards the British system where, um, gee, you want to get a hip replacement, but gosh, you're too old at 57. And I think there's a real vulnerability here. I think this is an argument that young voters in general haven't heard, that upscale voters in general haven't been hearing very much. Uh, we've been hearing, you know, some Republican candidates and, um, you know, speakers at CPAC and uh, some of the conservative blogs say, well, if we just yell lower taxes long enough, then everybody will come to our side. Well. Um, that's, that's not sufficient. I mean, the fact is 40% of uh, households in this country don't pay federal income tax in any case. What you've got to do is relate to people's lives. And you've got to make the point, and I think to young voters in particular, we want to give, have public policies that give you a chance to choose your future. They want to choose your future for you. They want to lock you into mid-20th century systems of centralized command and control, some of which are right, struggling to keep out of bankruptcy courts right now. We want to give you uh, a, a government and public policies that enable you to make choices yourself, to, uh, to work your way, to find the work, 
to find the personal life, to find your own role in voluntary associations and communities on your own, and to make the choices that you want to make, and not to put you in lockstep uh, with uh, the leaders of the labor unions and the leaders of the centralized federal government determining uh, how you make your living uh, and how you get your health care. I'm sometimes asked the question, is this a period? like the 1930s or the 1970s, when we're going to see an inflection point in the balance, in opinion on the balance between markets and government. I mean, to oversimplify to somewhat, in the 1930s, um, people decided markets didn't work very well and government worked better. In, you know, bread lines in the 30s, gas lines of the 1970s, to oversimplify. We got the idea that uh, government doesn't work very well and markets work better. Is this going to be a shift back towards saying government markets don't work very well, government does? Um, I think public opinion polling has shown clearly that we're not there yet, that basic attitudes on the balance of big and small government uh, have not shifted a lot despite the change from a 51-48 Republican 04 to 53-46 Democratic in 08. As I've been thinking about those inflection points of the 30s and the 70s, the reason they proved to be inflection points was not just because of the perceived failure of markets in the 30s and of government in the 70s, but because the next decade produced a positive alternative. The positive alternative to the 1930s depression was American success in World War II, which was achieved or perceived to be achieved by big government, big business, big labor. It created a country, the mid 20th century America, where people were happy to be small cogs in a part, as part of very large organizations to let centralized leaders in command and control and big government, big business, and big labor make decisions for them. They were productive within that system. That was our habit of the heart, to use one of Tocqueville's terms. The inflection point of the 70s really takes place in the 1980s because in the 1980s we see an alternative to the 1970s that works and that's the success of the Reagan years, mourning in America, the surge of the economy which people had just about given up on. I mean we forget how unexpected that growth was in the 1980s. Um, the success of America and the Cold War and winning the Cold War and so forth. And that set the terms and conditions for many Americans uh, for another gener long generation to come uh, and prove that inflection point. Um, we're now in a much earlier stage in the process. Um, we have not seen, I think, major changes uh, in opinion and the balance between markets and government. Uh, there are new issues every day. We're in a period of open field politics. The need for uh, making arguments, making your case is very important and can have the leverage of influencing things for a lot of time to come. Finding good candidates, as Senator Cornyn is working to do, is very important. And in the unsettled state of our politics, we could see um, races seriously contested in places where on the basis of the numbers in 2002, 2004, 2006, everybody would say that race isn't seriously contested. So uh, I think this is a business that's going to need your full attention uh, and, uh, and participation. And I thank you for the opportunity of talking to you this morning.